Welcome to Excel 2013 statistical video number 17. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great trick here for when calculating a mean. So here we have some quiz scores. As we saw the last couple of videos, if we're calculating mean, we use the average function. It will add them all up and divide by the count. So the average score or mean score on this quiz was 6.16. Ah, but we don't always get our data points in this form. Sometimes you will be given them in this form. Hey, this looks just like last chapter where we had a frequency table. Here's the unique list of possible quiz scores. And here's the count, a frequency. So sometimes you're given. Two people got a score of 5. Three people got a score of 6. And if you have this, can we calculate the mean? You betcha. Well, look at over here. We have a 5 and a 5. In the numerator, we'd actually add those two things. Well, we can get that same number over here, 2 times 5. Three sixes, well, there was three sixes over here. No problem. 18, we can get that over here by multiplying what's called the weight and the particular x value. So 6 times the weight of 3 will give us 18. So step 1 for in the numerator is take your weight, the number of times this particular value occurred, times the particular value. Control Enter, copy it down. I'm going to copy. And then come down to the bottom, Alt equals. That's our sum function and enter. So 74, that's the total. If we added up all of these over here, looking down in our status bar, we can see 74. So that's looking good for a weight. Now, what do we do over here? We counted, right? So I see a count of 12. Well, what if I were to add up all the weights? Alt equals, it's exactly a count of 12. So to calculate a weighted mean, x bar, but now we have a different calculation. The sum of the particular weights times the particular x's divided by the sum of the weights. Now let's go ahead and calculate this over here. Hey, there's the sum of weights times particular values. And I want to divide it by the sum of the weights. Oh, we get the exact same thing. Now that's pretty cool. We can build this extra column, add these, and then make a division calculation. But notice, that's a lot of extra calculation just to get the single cell number we want. Well, no problem. There's a formula we can build that will do that all in a single cell. But I want to come and look at this. Hey, look, all of the particular x's times all of the particular weights, and then we add it. Let's just do a trick here. F2, Enter, F2, Enter. Do you see the orange one times the blue one? It almost looks like there's a column times a column. Let me do that again. F2, Enter, F2. It's the orange column times the blue column, and then you add it. Well, think about this. Sum is the word for adding. Product is the word for multiplying. There's an actual function called sum product, S-U-M-P, tab. It wants the array in their array. And so I'm going to give it in any particular order. But the two arrays or ranges have to be exactly the same size. This is six rows by one column. Notice it says array one. I type a comma to get to the next argument. The next array, the weights, hey, it's also six rows by one column. No way. Some product will do it. It will actually multiply each individual element. That's the product part of this. And then it will add the result. That's the sum part. You ready? It better be some 74, right? And Control Enter, and sure enough, it is 74. Now, what did we also have to do before we calculated? We also had to add up the weights. Well, I want a single cell formula, so F2. My cursor's at the end, so I'm going to divide by the sum of the weights. No way. Close parentheses, Control Enter, boom, a single cell formula. That is absolutely beautiful. And here's what's even cooler. If I were to remove all this, well, that's, of course, not going to work. But that's only pointing at the source data. It works perfectly. So for single cell weighted mean calculation, that's the way to go. Now Control Z. Let's go look at another great example for weighted mean, because in business and accounting and finance, there's all sorts of examples for weighted means. Hey, look, here's our dates. Here's the 
quantities we purchased of the quad boomerang product on each one of those days. And there's the price per unit. Well, at the end of the year, you have this information. And you need to calculate what's called the weighted average. Well, I can take 108 times that price, 72 times that price, and so on. So I'm going to say, hey, the weight, that's 108 items, times the particular x, that's the price. Control Enter, and drag it down. Down at the bottom, I can Alt equals and Enter. That's the total cost we expended. Well, we now need to add up the weight. So I come over here, Alt equals and Enter, 120. Now, for our particular situation here, we have 865 that we sold during the year. And we need to calculate cost of goods sold and ending inventory. Well, there's lots of ways to do valuation of inventory, but weighted average is one common way. I already have the two numbers. I'm going to say, hey, the big numerator divided by the big denominator and enter. There it is. $22.82. That's the average price we paid throughout the year for the quad boomerang. Now, the single cell formula, and many times you know, in accounting, you don't want to do all this extra stuff. You're not interested in any of that. You just want the one number. No problem. Equals some product. I'm going to take array 1 times array 2. It doesn't matter in which order. I'm going to take the x's first. I see that I got the array comma to get to the next argument. Now I take the weights. And now it will product, multiply all the individual elements, and then sum, add them. Now this only gives the numerator, right? Oh, yeah. Roop, there, it's exactly the same. F2 to put in an edit mode. Weighted mean always divides by the sum of the weights. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Same exact number. Now, how do we calculate cost of goods sold and in ending inventory? Well, we looked on our records. 865 quads sold this year. So our total cost of goods sold is going to be equals 865 times our weighted average. Enter. So on our income statement, it will show 19738 28 cents for cost of goods sold for quads. Now, the ending inventory, well, we know the total here and the 865, so equals in parentheses, because we have to force subtraction first. The total minus the 865 times the weighted average. There we go, ending inventory. And when we add those two up, Alt equals, oh, remember, Alt equals doesn't always guess right. I'm going to highlight these two. This is a check number, Control Enter. I'm going to move it. Boop, down there, and then I'm going to put total. Control Enter, Control B. That's just like my check figure, right? Because those are the two numbers I'm going to. That goes on the balance sheet. That goes on the income statement. And sure enough, boom, there it is. Now we want to look at our next example. And this is the same data set in a slightly different form. So sometimes the accounting department will give you the prices and the frequency, but they might give you the percent frequency. Now. I just want to remind you that we did this last chapter. So percent frequency for the actual frequencies or counts, these are the units that we purchase, right? We could say equals, hey, this count of 108, we bought it 108 at this price, divided by the total in F4 to lock it, Control Enter. When I copy this down, now I have percent frequency or relative frequency if you didn't have the number formatting for the actual counts here. If we add these all up, it better equal 100% and Enter. So sometimes in an accounting department, you're going to be given, or other situations too in finance and lots of other situations, you'll be given the individual values and the percent frequency. That's the percentage of all of the times it happened that this particular item happened. So uh, 1742 happened 10.59% of the time. Now, what do we do? Well, it's even a little bit easier. So again, the idea is we have these two columns. Well, we can multiply equals the percent frequency times the actual price per unit. Control Enter. And when I copy it down, Remember, all of these add up to 1. So if I add up all of these, it'll be exactly Alt equals Enter our weighted average, that 2280. So 
If you're given the values and the percent frequency, then you can calculate the weighted average very easily. In Chapter 5, this will be called the expected value. All right, so uh, method three is just uh, the single column, and then there it is at the bottom. We could also use sum product. So sum product allows us to multiply two arrays and then add. Well, we'd have our particular values. In our case, the prices, comma, and the second array are percent frequency. That's the percent of all the total times that this price happened, and then this one, then this one. Multiply them together, Control Enter, and 2282. So we actually saw uh, method number one was the extra column where we have particular x times the weight, and then add them up and add all the weights. So we did that one there. Then we saw method two, that was the sum product where we multiplied the particular x's and the weights, and then we divided by the sum of all the weights. And then if you're given a percent frequency table, you can simply add method 3, an extra column, multiply percent times a particular value. And then the total is the weighted average. Or you can use method 4. That's the sum product where we take percent frequency times the price per unit. And that will be called expected value in chapter 5. And expected value means if you're looking at past data, and you want to estimate for the future what the price might be, like for budgeting, that would be the expected value. Hey, uh, this video we talked about the amazing weighted mean. Next video, we'll talk about another amazing mean called the geometric mean used for financial data. All right, we'll see you next video.